You're listening to Trek FM. Hello and welcome to From There to Here, Trek FM's 50th anniversary of Star Trek, in which we look at all 729 episodes from beginning to end. I'm Mike from Stage 9. And I'm Richard. And we are going to be talking about two episodes of Star Trek today. One, Yay! <laughs> one from Deep Space Nine and one from Voyager. The Deep Space Nine episode is Indiscretion, and the Voyager episode is Persistence of Vision. So let's get started with Indiscretion. This is the episode where Kira finds out that um, a, a ship, a Cardassian ship, which was carrying Bajoran prisoners back in the day, has potentially been found. And one of the Bajoran pr- prisoners who was on the ship was uh, the guy who got her into the Shakar resistance cell or, or whatever it was. So she's like, okay, I'm going to go look because, you know, can't can't give up hope. You know, you, we got to go try to find this thing. And the Cardassians get wind of this and they decide, well, hey, it's our ship. We have people on there too. We want to send a representative, you know, with Kira to, to go look for this thing. So Kira's like, fine, if that's how it's going to be, that's how it's going to be you know, send them over. So they send over Dukat. And she's like, what? And then hijinks ensue, quite literally, because it almost becomes like a buddy-buddy Kira Dukat episode where the two of them need to work together to find these people. And in the process, we find Dukat's daughter, who we're introduced to here, Zial, who becomes a major part of the show um, for the rest of the run, really. Um, but it's it's a it's a, a very strangely structured episode on the whole. So, Richard, uh, what what do you think about the idea of of Kira and Dukat having sort of a a buddy buddy adventure road trip episode here? Road trip, yeah, man, yeah, lots of drama on a road trip. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh, man. That's that's gotta be that's gotta be rough, uh, especially someone that hates hates Ducat, and of course he loves the drama of being, especially with Kira of all people, and of course Cisco and everyone, but probably more Kira than anyone else. And I'm sure down underneath, he, he just absolutely wants to <laughs> be that uh, be that annoying guy in her life. <laughs> Yeah, it's. It, I, I think it was. I, I'm pretty sure this is the episode where Nana Visitor was really kind of like, "Why are we doing this? Like, this doesn't. This seems to be betraying. You know what? What we're trying to accomplish with with this relationship? And really, I mean, the idea. I mean, there's like a scene in this episode where like Ducat like sits on a pine needle of some sort, and like. Kira's like, oh, you know, let me help you out with that, and 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 they're like literally just like sitting there, like laughing with each other, like sitting around a campfire for you know a few minutes, and it's like I don't buy this relationship. I do not buy the fact that even if you know they're trying to like show Ducat as being more quote unquote human, that uh, you know Kira would put up with his stuff, you know, because she was you know i mean the cardassians and 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 the the bajorans they do not like each other at all so i don't know that that part i i i really don't like but i do like the idea of kind of like seeing the cardassian side of things you know sort of like putting a a human face on them and i think the introduction of zial kind of makes it all worth it but it's it's an interesting you know element to bring in to to sort of like give some extra texture to Ducat, but um, I and, and I don't really have any problem with like what he does in this episode, but I really do think it it's kind of a betrayal of Kira's character to you know have her be as I guess accepting of 
of Ducat as she is here. I think that's a little weird. Mm. So, so I don't know. But on, on the whole, I, it, it's it's still a decent episode, I think. Yeah. All right. Well, should we move on to our next episode, which is Persistence of Vision, a Voyager episode in which uh, they're trying to get the doctor to, you know, be able to be seen in other parts of the ship and everything like that. Before and, the mobile emitter. <laughs> yes, before before they figure that out. And um, Janeway has been under some stress. She needs a break. And she decides to uh, check out her hollow novel, the weird one with where she's the governess or whatever. And all of a sudden, weird things are happening. And, you know, what's real and what's not? And why is she imagining? And who? And then Kess is seeing what's going on. And pretty soon, like, everyone's like, I don't know what's going on. I'm all, you know, having weird visions and stuff. And they need to try to figure out what, what the cause of this is. So what did you think about persistence of vision? Watching it for the second time, I mean, I I actually forgot. When I watched this for the second time, uh recently it's it definitely uh i completely forgot about this episode and it's I and mean, it brought back memories because i have seen i have seen this uh episode before but i mean thinking um uh, when kess was the mirror i guess uh for for whatever these holograms i'm thinking like proton packs we need to whip them out and start catching some ghosts or something like that but yeah <laughs> but uh yeah it, it was a it was a good episode i liked it a, a lot i mean it you know, honestly, I one of the things that I really liked uh, liked about Voyager was the whole holo program with um, her being uh, Miss Davenport, Davenport. I think that's what her na- uh, name was in the in the in the holo novel. And I would have loved to see more of that. I mean, it was a very interesting story, uh, and it, we just never really saw much of that throughout the entire thing. Okay, it was a story that she liked to wind down with, but we never really saw anything else unless something happened in the story or something uh, screwy happened with the holodeck or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, overall, I mean, I I actually, I really like this episode. I guess uh, thinking about it is like, what, what, what would be my image that the, uh, uh, that that hologram would, or I'm sorry, that alien would would have shown me is what I was thinking throughout the episode, you know, because everyone becomes a, a catatonic zombie just all of a sudden when they, when he catches them. Or if that's what you want to call it, catch them or, you know, um, whatever he's showing them. They, and it puts them into that kind of talk state. Yeah, like like what is what is your, who, who is like the physical embodiment of your regret or or pain and suffering? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. I, that's, I, I don't know. I don't know who, who that would be for me either. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't really say. I, I can't think of anything. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's a very interesting. I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, obviously, if we were to go into space and we might encounter something like this, I mean, obviously we're susceptible to whatever, and maybe a, a, a multiple species cr- uh, crew would be beneficial. And obviously, we found out why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah I I don't I don't I I would say this is one of the weaker episodes of of Voyager I I really do think that like season two of Voyager is sort of like its biggest lull in in, in a lot of ways uh and and then it sort of like starts picking up and by the time it gets to season four it's is really great and I think this is where it was on the downslide and I was like as a viewer really starting to think like why am i watching this and you know in a couple of days we're going to get to the episode where i was like that's it i'm done you know which is <laughs> a very interesting uh interesting uh point in star trek for me but uh yeah i i don't know i mean i guess i see kind of what they're going for and i was very much intrigued by this alien race and sort of like what it is they're doing but it it's it's a long road getting from there to here you know and mm-hmm. and some of this early stuff going on in this episode with like the hollow program and everything i'm just like boy i do not care you know i just i just do not care about any of this so yeah i i would say that this is one of the weaker episodes of of star trek for me and uh yeah i'm not i'm not really too thrilled by the the overall you know whatever some some of the 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 individual things were kind of interesting in terms of getting a glimpse into what makes these characters tick, like seeing Paris with his dad and stuff. 
but some of it was just like weird like what's going on like you're seeing Bellana and, and Chicote together it's like I, I don't understand what you're doing here so yeah I, I don't know uh, on the whole not not a very good episode in in my opinion you, you know and I, I really wish they would have just definitely I, I wish they would have had more of these episodes with like uh, well not not this specific episode but like obviously we uh, this alien we only see once and that's as far as i can remember that's the only time we we hear from him and maybe if it was something like later on down the road that we'd see something like a part two to um this episode uh, that we would uh it, it would make it would have it would be more of a, a better episode to like set up another one. It's just I just really wished it would have done that otherwise because I was like at the epi- in the episode it's like he vanishes and it's like that's it and then all the ships disappear. I'm like and that's it. Yeah, and? but th- that that's that's one of the you know sort of like unique challenges with Voyager is that you know they're they're not ever it's not like they're just going around in circles or whatever they're constantly leaving you know whatever they come across it's like hey all right we'll see you guys later bye and then they're gone you know so i mean sure you can come across and be like well there you know there's there's a lot of them out there space is big you know we can but generally speaking they're always leaving whoever they just saw you know so it's hard unless you're going to do a follow-up like in the next few weeks or whatever it's hard Mm -hmm. to to go back and and see these people again because you know a year from now you're going to be in a completely different place you know what i mean right no it's, yeah I, I totally agree yeah it's, it, you know it's it's it an interesting off. challenge and, and and because of that you know unlike deep space nine where it's like everybody's here you know for the duration it's like it's constantly changing week to week and and it sort of like demands a different type of storytelling in a lot of ways because you know, you're always going to have a new adversary. It's it's, mm-hmm. it's an interesting problem, you know? Yeah. Like, I wonder how often they did say, like, we want to go back to those people, the weird hologram people things. And then, you know, they're like, well, we can't, you know? Like, I just came up with the best idea. Well, we're not there anymore. You know? Wouldn't that be great for the uh, for the, uh, the Captain Proton uh, episode where uh, they're fighting against those um, holographic beings? Yeah, I think that yeah. would be good. I don't know. But I did. I did want to. I did want to say. I was just looking at uh, Bantha. I mean, at an end, you got Bantha, and I mean, could be a Star Wars reference. I don't know. Just drop. Just add an end in there, and you're good. <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of speaking of Star Wars references, boy, you know, going back a little bit to uh, indiscretion. But I think this is the first time we see the Breen. You know, they talk about them in generations, like Romulan, Breen, or Klingon. And they're supposed to be like these, you know, badass warrior guys. And then they come in with their costumes, and they are straight up Boosh from Return of the Jedi, the the, the bounty hunter that Princess Leia was disguised as at the beginning of, of Jedi. And then she... You know, she comes in and she's like, because he's holding a thermal detonator. And then, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> they look exactly like that. Like, how did they not get sued? How did Lucasfilm not <laughs> sue Paramount for copyright infringement? Because those helmets are exactly the same. It's even, you know, Ducat and, and Kira are like pretending to be these people. And then they like take off their masks, just like, you know, Princess Leia, like someone who loves you. You know, that, I mean, like, wow, like they weren't even trying trying to be they were just like whatever star wars did it right back in 1983 let's just steal that you know just, we're, we're out it's crazy how like the, similar to to the bush disguise the the brain uh armor is but but i digress anyway i'm actually looking at it that's actually pretty damn close it's it pretty is close it's <laughs> extremely close oh uh, well yeah yeah that's yeah wow <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. I was like, "Wow, that's really close." <laughs> yes. Anyway, any more thoughts on persistence of vision? Other than uh, we, I really wish you to saw more. You know, of a like a setup story, or this could have been the setup story. But I mean, no, not really. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I guess that pretty much wraps up our block. Uh, thank you for, for joining me, Richard. Uh, where, where can people find you on the Internet? 
They can find me on Twitter at xransom and also on the Babel Conference um, here and there. All right. And you can find me right here on Trek FM doing Stage 9 with John Mills, where we talk about the people who make Star Trek. And you can find me on Twitter at Mumbles3K. All right. Well, Richard won't be here tomorrow, but I will be with Daniel from Earl Grey to talk about two more episodes of Star Trek, Deep Space Nine in particular, Rejoined and Starship Down.